TRS Val here again. As you can see, I got a brand new headlight housing. I got a 2012 Chevy Tahoe, and that can only mean one thing, projector retrofit time. Let's get right into it. Now, before we get started, I highly recommend wearing some gloves just so that you don't get fingerprints all over everything. First, let's start off by preheating the oven to 255 degrees. Next, let's throw the headlight in for five minutes. Let's pull the headlight out, pry the little plastic clips back on the housing, and get our seal splitter and start prying the headlight open. You'll notice once we pull the lens off, all this glue is left. Just push it down with your fingers. Let's remove the turn signal bowl just to free up some space. Now let's head to our table. Keep in mind that you want to choose a table that's about 20 to 25 feet from a wall. Let's lay down some masking tape so that we can mark off exactly where the headlight sits on the table so we can line it up later when we put the projectors in. Now with the 12 volt power supply, let's light up the low beam bulb on the wall. With some masking tape, let's mark off where the factory cutoff line is on the wall. Now that we have the factory cutoff masked on the wall, repeat the same process for the other headlight. Now we can go ahead and start disassembling more of the headlight. Let's start by removing the low beam and high beam bulbs. We can also remove the bulb caps off of the low beam bowls. Now grab your MLED 2.0 projectors and lay out all the hardware on the table. To make our test fitting a little bit easier, we went ahead and removed this wiring harness just so nothing gets broken. Now let's go ahead and pop out the low and high beam bowls out of the housing. With safety in mind and flying debris, be sure to wear some safety glasses. And let's go ahead and make our first rough cut with a Dremel tool. With the rough cut made, let's go ahead and place our projector in the reflector bowl. With the permanent marker, let's mark off a rough outline. Let's go ahead and make our second cut. And if your second cut isn't big enough, go ahead and continue to make more slight modifications to your bowl. Also, keep in mind that the MLED has a heat fan on the bottom. You don't want anything to be in the way of that. Now, once you're satisfied with the hole you cut in your reflector bowl. Let's go ahead and throw the reflector bowl back in the housing and head to the table so that we can line the projector up with the factory output. Let's go ahead and plug our LED driver up to the MLED 2.0 and power that up with the 12 volt power supply. Now let's line up the cutoff line of the MLED 2.0 to the factory output, just to help center the MLED. Let's mix up some JB Quick Weld to adhere the projector to the reflector bowl. Now, keep in mind when you're adding this JB Weld, you don't have to get full coverage because this is just a tack weld. Let's go ahead and pop out our reflector bowls, mix up some more JB Weld, and apply generously. Now that our projector is secured into place, keep in mind that you want to be wearing protective gloves during this process so you don't get fingerprints over everything. Go ahead and take your projector shrouds. Place the shroud over the projector just to give you a rough estimate on how much you're going to have to trim. Now keep in mind that trimming varies depending on shroud type and size. Now with the belt sander or Dremel tool, go ahead and trim the shroud to the desired dimensions. Now keep in mind that you want to frequently test the size just so that you don't trim too much material off. Now that you're satisfied with the size of the shroud, let's go ahead and clean everything up. We start by removing the front half of the projector and with the microfiber towel, very lightly wipe down the dust inside. Now grab a piece of sandpaper and scuff up the lens holder so that when we go to JB Weld the shroud on, it sticks properly. With the microfiber towel, let's wipe down the inside and outside of the projector lens, just to remove any kind of fingerprints or debris. Now, once everything's wiped down, get some compressed air, whether that's from an air compressor or an air can that you buy from a store, and go ahead and blow all the dust away, starting with the projector lens and then the projector and reflector bowls. Let's go ahead and reassemble our projector. With that same piece of sandpaper, go ahead and sand down the inner ring of the shroud. 
Blow out the remaining debris out of the inside and let's mix up some more JB Weld. Very carefully apply the JB Weld to the outside of the lens holder, making sure that you don't get any JB Weld on the projector lens. Now we can go ahead and put our shroud into place. Now what I like to do is place the projector down into the foam like this vertically so that when the JB Weld liquefies a little bit, it gives you a better contact. Repeat the same steps with the other headlight. Now that all of our JB Weld is fully cured, we can go ahead and pop the reflector bowls back into the headlight housing. Now before we seal the headlights back up, let's take some retro rubber, stretch it out and place it into the channels. With the new microfiber towel or lens cloth, gently wipe down all the chrome and painted surfaces. And let's go ahead and reinstall the turn signal bowl. And again, with an air compressor or a compressed air can, go ahead and blow away all the remaining debris or any dust inside of the headlights before we seal them up. Make sure to blow the air into the lens also in case there's any kind of dust in there. And once that's done, Place the lens back onto the housing. Now we're ready to seal our headlight. Let's preheat the oven to 255 degrees. Place our headlight in and bake it for five minutes. Now let's remove our headlight from the oven. Make sure to line the lens up with the housing and with firm pressure, press down the lens to the housing. Now that we have the headlights sealed back together, as you can see, here are the rest of the products we're gonna use in this build series. I'm gonna show you how you can install these products in your headlight housings. Then we're gonna throw the headlights on the truck and see some beautiful output shots. Now let's drill a half inch hole in this housing cap so that our grommet can seal properly and be watertight. Now, I just went over the housing cap with a half inch drill bit, but to cut the actual hole with the drill bit is not accurate. So now that I have an imprint of the hole, I'm gonna cut it out with an X-Acto knife. I found this method to be the most precise. Let's go ahead and thread the wire through it and position the grommet in the hole. Slide the grommet on the wire and install the housing cap onto your housing. Now let's reinstall the OEM high beam seal. Let's go ahead and put in our 9005 two stroke bulbs. Now that we've secured that, let's go ahead and flip it around to the front and make sure our LED bulb is positioned correctly in the high beam bowl. As you can see, it is positioned straight up and down. So where the LED chips are firing side to side and that is the correct position. Now let's go ahead and switch out our side marker bulbs. We're gonna be using a pair of Philips 194 amber LED bulbs. Let's switch out our turn signal bulb with some Profile Peak 3157 amber bulbs. Now on these trucks, this inner bulb is usually a DRL bulb, but on this truck, we're gonna rewire it so that this bulb acts as a turn signal bulb also. We're gonna throw in another Profile Peak Performance 3157 amber bulb. Now let's connect the LED driver to the MLED 2.0 projector. Go ahead and find the groove on the driver side and the tab on the projector side. Line them up and slide the connector together and thread on the locking collar. Now let's connect the low beam input to the LED driver to the vehicle harness. To do this, we take a 9005 female to H11 male harness adapter, plug this side into the LED driver connector, connect the male side into the headlight harness side. Now to light up the two stroke LED high beam bulb and the high beam function of the MLED 2.0 projector, we're gonna need this 9006 splitter. Connect one end to the connector of the LED driver, the other female end to the two stroke bulb. Now connect the male side of the splitter to the high beam plug coming from the headlight. Now we can use some zip ties to tidy all this up and it's good to install on the vehicle. As you can see, we have one piece left. This is a LED load resistor. This will go on the vehicle and this is to prevent hyper flash now that we installed LED bulbs in the turn signal. As you can see, now these lights are complete. We went for an OEM Plus look. They're crisp, clean, and simple. Let's throw them on this Tahoe and see how they look. 
To install the headlights on the vehicle, let's go ahead and start by popping the hood and removing all the necessary screws to remove the bumper. Now let's take off the necessary screws to remove the headlights. Remove the factory headlights and disconnect the wiring connections to the headlight. Repeat with the other headlight. To install the new headlights, let's connect the wire harness to the headlights, bolt the headlights back on, and run through the functions just to make sure everything works. Since we had the bumper already off the vehicle, we went ahead and installed a set of Morimoto XB fog lights just to help modernize this Tahoe. Once that's complete, reassemble the rest of the vehicle and let's see how they look on the wall. Now you can see just how much wider, brighter, and more clean the cutoff line is compared to stock, and no doubt you'll see much, much better at night. As you can see, same goes for the high beam. It's a drastic difference over the stock, and you'll be able to see much more at night. Now that concludes this retrofit project. If you liked what we did here, press that like button, press that subscribe button if you wanna see our upcoming projects and drop a comment down below about what you would like us to retrofit next. I'll catch you on the next one.